Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. So the first part of the Doctor Who finale just aired. We finally found out who Missy was. Big WTF. We learned all about the Cybermen. We have a pretty good idea of what's going on, but there's still a big mystery as to what the Doctor's going to do about it. The biggest things we needed to talk about are the Missy reveal and what it means for the future of that character. So many crazy things were going on. It feels like the Doctor was the only one with his head on straight in this episode. Normally it's the other way around. Normally he's the madman in the box. Quick reminder, new round of the giveaway starts right now. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave a comment on this video. So careful for spoilers from the first part of the finale if you haven't seen it yet, but starting with top five moments. Okay, everybody ready? Here we go. Number five, Danny Pink is dead. What a heartbreaking way to begin the finale, especially that whole montage with Clara. It's hard to tell how much time had passed, but they hadn't cremated Danny's remains, so it couldn't have been that long. I'd bet less than a day had passed when she started to phone the doctor. I didn't recognize the planet the TARDIS was parked on, so if you do know what that is, just write it below in the comments. I feel like they've tried extra hard to go to some more alien places in Series 8. Matt Smith came to America, Peter Capaldi is going everywhere he can in outer space. I know there were a lot of early evil Clara theories, so whenever she said, I am owed better to her grandmother, I felt like that was starting to tease some sort of evil Clara montage. Which leads me to number four, Clara tries to pull a fast one on Malcolm Tucker. And just fair warning, I'm going to cuss a little bit because Malcolm Tucker, you understand. Little did Clara know that the doctor is completely unfuckable. He has never been fucked before. As far as we know, maybe River Song would have something to say about that. Definitely loud flashing warning lights all over the place whenever the doctor woke up in the volcano. Giant shout out to Fires of Pompeii. There were a lot of theories that they would go back to Pompeii. I don't know necessarily that that's where they were but I feel like that's why they went to an active volcano. Like it was just a big wink to that. Everybody let me know how you feel about Clara in this moment. I felt like after this scene, everyone would be totally okay with Clara not coming back. Everyone would be like, okay, fine. You completely tried to screw the doctor. This is what you get. I did feel a little slapped in the face when the doctor said that none of that mattered. You betrayed me, you betrayed our trust. Still, I don't care. He's setting himself up to be royally screwed, even if Clara's not the one to do it. It did lighten the mood, but I do wonder if the Doctor has another way besides the keys to get inside the TARDIS. I understand the need to do crazy things to try and surprise the audience, especially in a season when there's been so many spoilers about Doctor Who stories, but I'm not a huge fan of when they completely take everything back after a scene. It feels a little disingenuous. Like if they were going to have Clara throw all the TARDIS keys in the volcano, I feel like they should have left it that way, and the Doctor should have had another way back in the TARDIS. He still could have forgiven her, but that whole scene feels like a wasted moment. When they say something never even happened, why bother writing that scene and spending the time to film it when you could have filmed another scene? I feel like that Clara scene is going to be one of the most controversial from Clara's run, pending anything she does in the last episode. I do have to hand it to Moffat for having the balls to try something like that. I can feel half the fandom rising up in rage. At the moment, Clara owned up to it and said, yeah, I did that. I love him. It makes me feel like she is definitely not coming back. Like it just lends more credence to the idea that Clara is completely done with the Doctor. The Doctor is just a tool to get what she wants now, so their relationship is completely broken, regardless of what the Doctor says. Number three, welcome to the Nether Sphere. So we finally get to see what everyone's been seeing whenever they look out those windows. Jumping forward a bit, we found out that what Danny Pink is seeing is the inside of the Matrix. His consciousness was uploaded to the Matrix, so it's not an actual physical place. It's like cyberspace. Seb said that he was in a new body, but really that's not true. But he is still connected to his physical body, like his consciousness is. They kind of explained the 3W association. Don't cremate my body, don't cremate my body, don't cremate my body. Just to explain the cremation thing, they can't use their skeleton to create a Cyberman if they're cremated. The whole 3W thing felt like a riff on the beating of drums, even though that was a 4 beat. I did love the welcome that Missy gave the Doctor. It doesn't completely explain the relationship between the Master and the Doctor because I don't think there was anything sexual between them before. Time Lords get new personality traits when they regenerate, so I guess you could look at that as the explanation for why Missy is calling the Doctor her boyfriend. It's a bit weird, I hope they explain it in the second part of the finale. The Time Lord technology she's using, the Matrix, is the Nether Sphere. And I think that was Missy pretending to be a robot. That was the actual Missy. It was just the master having fun with the doctor. Number two, the dead have been cyber converted. Previously, the Cybermen have not been able to do this. I feel like it's only because the master is using Time Lord technology to bridge that gap. That's why he's able to upload the mind, upgrade the body, so to speak. I'm getting a little confused talking about Missy and the master, so I hope you guys all understand. I'm probably gonna be jumping back and forth between pronouns without realizing it. 
Right now, pretty much just thinking about the Cybermen is the Toclophane, just another way to take over the Earth. The big question now is why is the Master so obsessed with Earth? He can go anywhere he wants in time and space, presumably. I think he's just trying to get at the Doctor. The Doctor loves Earth, so the Master wants to break his toy. The Cybermen invasion itself, you know, marching down the steps of St. Paul's Cathedral, is a big call back to a second Doctor episode. That time, it was like the last big episode the Cybermen were in for a long, long time. So it's a really notable callback to Doctor Who history, as well as just a really big thing to show, you know, Cybermen marching through modern day London. I like that no one is flipping out looking around. Pay no attention to the crazy Scotsman. I didn't know Match was on. You'd think the people would flip out more, maybe they just think it's a flash mob. There was that moment during the last episode where the Doctor kind of remarked about how children weren't surprised by anything. Like a big forest grew up and they didn't think it was a big deal. Maybe this is just a callback to that. People just don't think a bunch of Cybermen walking around are a big deal. And my number one WTF moment, of course, Missy is the mistress. So many questions right now. How did he survive the end of time and what does this mean for the future of that character? Right off the bat, I don't think that he's going to die at the end of this. There's no way they're going to kill the master character off. They keep bringing him back. He'll find a way to escape or she'll find a way to escape. But for all intents and purposes, during Capaldi's run through series nine or however long he stays, Michelle Gomez will be playing this character. I don't think they're going to gender swap her again. I know everyone totally loved the John Sim master, but he has that show on BBC America Intruders. So there's just no way he could play the character again. Maybe he could cameo in a background shot or something like that. That would be pretty funny. Of all the people Missy could have turned out to be, I feel like this was at or near the top of everyone's list. There were at least three people I feel like everyone thought she could have been. The craziest being a splinter version of Clara, which was why everyone was going crazy with the Clara WTF moments from the finale trailer. Then there was a female version of the master, and then there was the Ronnie. Two out of three are time ladies. I do like that Missy said time lady. It's been a long time since we've seen one on the show, so I am glad that one's back with a bit of a twist. Just in terms of the future of the character, I think that after we get through this finale, we're not just going to keep seeing her come back all the time. Even at the end of series three and series four, we didn't see him in that many episodes. So we should all start thinking about how she is going to escape at the end. Let me know though, what was your favorite moment from the episode? And let me know, how do you feel about the Missy mistress reveal? While you guys think about that, here are some of the Easter eggs I spotted. So first up, obviously it was the fires of Pompeii, which I mentioned. Active volcano, very dangerous. One of the only ways to destroy a TARDIS key. Then there's the Matrix. The last time we saw that was actually in a Valyard episode. During that episode, the Master took control of the Matrix and obtained the key of Rassilon. I don't know if they'll explain it, but at the time, that was the only way to get inside the Matrix, was to have the key of Rassilon. Hopefully they'll explain that in the second part of the finale. I know there were some theories about Missy being a version of the Valyard, so this is about as close as you're going to get. When we saw the shot of the afterlife, it looked a lot like Pete's world. The alternate reality where the Cybus Industries Cybermen were created. It just felt like a visual reference to that. The psychic paper was probably one of the funniest Easter eggs. Why all the swearing? Just a giant shout out to Malcolm Tucker. And like I said, the three W's felt like a bit of a reference to the beating of drums. That was a fundamental part of the character, the beating of drums. So it's unclear whether or not now that he's regenerated into a woman that they're going to continue doing that. If you spotted any other Easter eggs in the episode that I didn't list, just write them below in the comments. All in all, I'll give the finale a solid A for just huge WTF reveals. Moffat totally has some stones on him to turn the master into a mistress. What the episode did really well was deliver on excitement. First off, you have a companion completely betraying the doctor. Huge WTF. I can't remember the last time a companion went that crazy. River Song is a companion, kind of, but she was evil before she became a companion. I did feel like Jenna Coleman's evil performance was probably one of the better ones that she's turned in, so I'll give a hat tip to her for that. Mary Poppins hats off to Michelle Gomez too for her performance. Playing the master is just like playing the doctor. There have been so many people to do it before you. You have to find a way to make it your own while at the same time keeping a lot of familiar things about the character. The master is kind of like an evil mirror of the doctor. That same crazy mad man in a box thing or mad woman in a box. This episode was mostly her dancing around the doctor just having fun. So I'll be interested to see if she goes full evil in the second half. Crazy Master is a lot of fun, but I like Playful Master a lot better, so hopefully she'll keep it under her hat just a little bit. When it's all said and done, I'm hoping we get to see her in the Christmas special, at least in some way. All the people that are theorizing about Jenna Coleman leaving, I feel like that is when the transition would be made. So just a quick reminder, Q&A posting tomorrow, so be sure to subscribe to get that. Post all your questions in the comments. I'm totally bummed that Doctor Who's ending so soon, but it's really only a couple weeks before the Christmas special. Like, it's not going to be that long. 
For those asking, I will be doing more Sherlock Series 4 videos whenever Doctor Who is done. They will be filming that Christmas special, the 2015 Christmas special, in January. So while you keep thinking about the big WTF Missy reveal, you can click here for the q and I'll add the annotation as soon as I post it, and click here for my Doctor Who Episode 10 video. Thank you so much for watching, so let's all high five, and I will see you guys tonight.